What do you do if you've been refused a visa and you have the right to administrative review? Well, I'll go through the different possibilities. So you can either not pursue it or pursue it. And if you're pursuing it, you need to do it within 14 calendar days, unless there are specific circumstances, like if you're in detention. Now, if you're pursuing it, then the decision on admin review at the moment, it could take about 12 months, as long, in other words, as long as a year. That's an extraordinary period. I'm talking about the cases that I do, which are in the context of business immigration, but that that's the that's the current uh, time that I'm seeing that people are waiting. Now, if you're pursuing the admin review, it's either going to be successful, unsuccessful, or you're going to uh, just make an, make another application. So I'm going to look at all three scenarios. So let's have a look at the scenario where you're successful. Well, if you're successful in the admin review, then generally it's going to be remitted. So be remitted for reconsideration. And then the reconsidered substantive decision is going to take another period, which itself could be as long as 12 months at the time that I'm doing this video. So in other words, you could be waiting a full two years. Now, the challenge there is that you can't leave the UK without withdrawing the admin review. So you're stuck in the UK. And I've put the legal provision here. An admin review will be treated as withdrawn if the applicant leaves the UK. So if you're going to wait it out, it's uh, an un unsatisfactory position given the current uh, timeframes in some cases. Now, if you're unsuccessful in the admin review, then you can stay in the UK and make an in-time, sorry, in-country, out-of-time application within 14 days of the admin review uh, refusal. Or you can leave the UK and apply from outside of the country. Now, if you're staying in the UK and making an application in the country, then it's going to be uh, out of time at that point. And the period for overstaying would be disregarded under paragraph 39E, whether the ap application you're making now is, is going to be successful or unsuccessful. So just to go to the law now, if applying for permission to stay, the applicant must not be in breach of immigration laws, except where paragraph 39E applies, that period of overstaying will be disregarded. And what the provisions say is that uh, you, the applicant can't have previously breached immigration laws, but the immigration laws wouldn't be deemed not to be breached if uh, paragraph 39E applies. So I'll just take you to that. So paragraph 39E, this paragraph applies where, as relevant. The application was made following the refusal or rejection of a previous application for leave that was made in time and within 14 days of the expiry of any leave extended by Section 3C. So that applies here. Let's assume that the application that you made was in time. The, you know, the first application was made in time. And you are now applying within 14 days of the expiry of your leave that was extended by Section 3C, uh, which pending the outcome of the admin review. You've now got the outcome of the admin review. It was refused and you've got that 14 days to now make the fresh application. So section 39, uh, the paragraph 39E applies and uh, extends, has the effect that your overstaying period will be, dis will be disregarded. Now, what's going to happen to that new application? Either it's going to be granted or refused. So if it's unsuccessful, if there's a refusal, then you have to leave the UK unless there's special circumstances or a human rights claim, for example. But this is going to be likely the end of the line. In other words, you made your application, it was refused. You did an admin review, it was unsuccessful. You applied again, and that application was refused. That's then going to be the end of the line in most scenarios. So any further application would be out of time, and the overstaying would therefore not be disregarded because the new application would presumably, depending on the time frame, right, uh, not be within the 14 days of Section 3C leave uh, expiring. And, you know, given the time frame to, for things, it's, it's very unlikely that everything would take place within 14 days. So even if uh, an admin review is granted on the new refusal, the, the refusal was not, quote, of a previous application for leave that was made in time under, section, uh, under paragraph uh, 39E2A. So any further application would likely be refused on grounds that you'd overstayed at that point. Again, there's certain exceptions, but that's likely going to be the end of the line for you at that point. Of course, if that new application following the unsuccessful admin review is successful, then you stay and that's all sorted. There's an additional scenario here. Look, you're unsuccessful on the admin review 
and then you leave the country and apply from outside of the country. But what if you bring the admin review in time and you've been waiting and waiting for a decision, not getting one, and you decide to make another application? Well, what the law says is that where a person has a pending admin review, they make a new application, then the admin review is treated as withdrawn the day before the new application is made. So the new application is then out of time. So the new application, assuming it's made within 14 days, is treated as being out of time. This is again an in-country, out-of-time application, but made within 14 days of the deemed withdrawal of the admin review. But again, the period of overstaying would be disregarded under paragraph 39E, uh, whether the application is successful or not, is going to be disregarded. Now, that new application, that new application is unsuccessful, so you get a refusal, then you need to leave the UK unless, again, there's special circumstances or a human rights application, let's say. Uh, but again, in, this is likely to be the end of the line in most scenarios. Any further application would be out of time and the overstaying uh, would not be disregarded uh, because the new application would presumably not be within 14 days of the Section 3C leave expiring because you, you would have waited for a period. I and mean, I suppose it is theoretically possible that you could do everything within the, within the 14 days, let's say with a priority or super priority service. And if you can uh, book the appointment in time with UK VCAS, if that's the route that you're going down, um, unless you're using the EV visa route. So theoretically, there's other scenarios, but I'm imagining that in most cases, uh, as it, as is the case, uh, it's going to take more than fourteen days uh, to to get a decision. Now, if you're if it's successful, then you stay on. So, I think what's the takeaway on this? Um, I set this out in the diagram because there's really just a decision making tree that you have to bear in mind uh, when you're going down the admin review route and thinking about whether you're going to make another application. Um, you can make another application after the admin review is refused, as long as you do it quickly. Um, but if that further application is then refused, then you can't just carry on making additional further further applications. Uh, it, that that doesn't work because those the further applications are very likely, as I said, unless there's some extraordinarily quick timetable, they're very likely going to be um, out of the 14 days from when the Section uh, 3C leave expired. Now, suffice it to say, this is an extraordinarily a uh, complex area of immigration law. If you do want advice, I have a consultation service. You do need to speak with me or another lawyer uh, before you uh, take any steps uh, down this road. And I'd be uh, pleased to assist you if you wanted help. Many thanks. Bye for now.